today I am so excited to share with you our rustic master bedroom wood build that we recently completed. It is a brand new farmhouse bed. We looked around for a ton of plans, Alex and I did, when we knew we wanted to redo this bedroom. And I saw some things that I liked on certain beds, some things I liked on other beds. And so we did a big old hybrid and created our own. So come along with us today as we build our brand new bed. I've got all the plans and all the details for you so you can also create it yourself. So let's get started. So the first thing we did was take those different plans and kind of figure out what we liked and what we wanted to do. And Alex hand sketched out a plan. I was so proud of him because that is well beyond my skills. Then we headed to Menards to get some lumber. Now we have a Home Depot close to us as well as a Menards. If you're in the Midwest, I would suggest going to Menards. Look at this huge lumber yard. This is not in a huge town. This is the one that's closest to our house and their prices are great. They've got three different levels of wood so you can get the standard, there's like an intermediate and then a super nice board. We ended up going with the middle board and got everything we needed. On this day too, we purchased all the wood that we needed for our nightstands and so what we ended up doing was renting a truck from Menards it was pretty affordable but we couldn't fit everything in the Jeep Alex would have had to make like six or eight trips it would have been ridiculous and some of the 10 foot ones we can't even fit in the Jeep so I would recommend looking into renting a truck if you're doing large builds so again this is all the wood for the bed as well as our nightstands that we got now I've got a full shopping list for you over in the free plans over on my blog. So click the link in the description. It will let you know everything we bought, all of the cuts, images, graphics, illustrations, all of the things. I'm pretty proud of this file. So head over and check it out if you wanna make this for yourself. All of the nitty gritty details will be in that. So once we got our wood home, it was time to start cutting. So the first thing Alex cut were these huge four by four posts. These are going to be the main pieces of this bed. They are going to be two anchors of the headboard and then two anchors of the footboard. Now we have a seven and a half inch Ryobi saw. So we had to do a little bit of kind of finagling and flipping it around, but we were able to cut almost halfway through and then Alex flipped it around. If you've got a 10 inch or bigger saw, you will probably be just fine, but we've got this smaller saw, so if you have a smaller one, you can do it. If you've got a bigger one, you can do it as well. Then we made some other cuts that we knew we could make at this time. So that being the headboard and the footboard, the footboard is four one by eight slats and the headboard is five one by eight slats. The width of all of them are exactly the same. So we did 76 inches across and measured all of those. So in total, we needed nine of those pieces at 76 inches. And so Alex went through and gave all of those a cut. Now, some of the other measurements you're definitely going to want to make as you go instead of cutting right at the beginning things like trim and other things that are dependent on the other cuts just because you don't want to cut and then have to cut again so i would suggest when you start just cut your four by fours as well as your one by eights and then you can start assembling and measure from there so to create the headboard and footboard we took those one by eights and used pocket holes and pocket hole screws to attach them so I'm going through and just marking about 12 to 15 inches across. We ended up doing five screws and we just go through with our little Craig jig to put in the pocket holes. Now, if you're not familiar with pocket holes, it's a pretty easy concept after you do it a couple times, get a little bit of experience, but we have this small one. It is super affordable and easy to store. You just take some clamps, hook them onto the wood, and then you drill essentially a hole at an angle. What this is going to do is allow you to screw the pieces together with your screw being kind of tucked up on the inside you get a really great joint that way and you don't see the screws at the end so you're going to want to drill your holes on the back of your pieces of wood so whatever side you don't want facing out that's where your pocket holes are going to go and then we just went through and put all of them together so you're going to need one big piece of five of these and then one big piece of four of these for your headboard and the footboard Thank you. 
Once the headboard and the footboard was assembled, then it was time to sand like crazy to make sure everything was flat, especially because it's off the shelf lumber. So Alex went through with our Ryobi orbital sander and sanded it all down. Our deal at our house is that Alex would much rather sand than stain and I would much rather stain than sand. So it's a great partnership. He goes through, does all of the muscle with the sanding when we do projects together and then I take care of the staining. I also loved with this one that Finn got involved. It was a beautiful day so he could be outside with us and play while we were building. Once those were all sanded, then it was time to cut the trim. So here is the overall look that I was going for. I was going to do just some simple lines on the footboard as well as a kind of chevron pattern on the headboard. The reason I did that instead of like barn door axes, which is what I saw in a lot of plans, is because I wanted this to last a lot longer than say a farmhouse goes out of style. I love it right now, but this is a piece we want to keep for years. And so I thought the chevron, like the just the lines would be a lot better. So I went through and measured and cut all of these. Again, all of these measurements that I used are over on the plans and I cut everything and put it down on to my sanded headboard and footboard to make sure everything was going to fit. So here's the headboard and the footboard and then the last step was to cut and add those diagonal pieces. Then my last cut before we really got hooking other things together was to figure out how wide I needed my top kind of ornamental piece essentially. We got two by six pieces of lumber and this is a really nice addition. It's a nice thick piece of wood and so I cut it so that there would be enough so that it would overhang over the top. So once I cut it, I laid it down and it was exactly what I wanted. It's a nice little tabletop too as I'm working in the room, I can set things on it so it's really nice. So here is the headboard and footboard after everything had been cut. The last thing to cut was a piece of 1x12 and this is so we can cover up the 2x4s that we're going to be using in a little bit to actually hold the bed up. So that's what's going to be doing a lot of the work. We cut the 1x12 with this little Craig adapter that we got for our handsaw just because our chop saw will not cut this big of wood. I really like this, so does Alex. I would definitely recommend it if you don't have a big saw so I will link that down below if you're interested. Then he went through and sanded all of those as well as the two 1x12s so that everything was ready to be stained. And I got pulled in off the bench to go to work with the wood stain. Now I did everything in our bedroom this briar smoke by Verithane and I really like it. A lot of the stuff in our house is dark walnut by Minwax which I also love but I wanted something that we could put on everything in the room so that it all looked like a completed bedroom set. And this briar smoke has a little bit of warmth to it and with our walls in that room being gray, I wanted it to have a little bit of a gray tint with warmth and that's what I found in this stain. So I went through and had a staining party. And then once all the stain was dry, I went through and gave everything a really good two coats of this polyurethane from Verithane. This says it's only one coat. I did two because I knew that this was going to be a used piece. I wanted to be able to spray it down and wipe it down and not have to worry about anything getting into the wood. We let that fully dry overnight and then it was time to assemble our pieces. So the first thing is using a nail gun, we added back on all of that trim that we originally cut and stained. We made sure to use a measuring tape as well as a speed square to make sure everything was centered. So hindsight is 2020, and I probably would have drilled these pocket holes while we were drilling all those other ones instead of having to drill into the stained wood, but you know, you learn as you go, so you can learn from my mistake. We ended up needing two pocket holes on each of the individual slats so that we could add the pocket hole screws to hook it to those four by four posts. So we just went through again with those DeWalt clamps, added two of them, 
A big thing to keep in mind is those original pocket holes. Make sure you avoid those as you're going. It's not a huge feat to have to do that. As you see here, we made sure that we got away from it. Then we went through and attached the slats to the post for both the headboard and the footboard. You want the front of your headboard and footboard flush with the front of your 4x4 posts. So we had both of them laying flat on the ground here. And I just helped Alex with some counter pressure as he was putting in the screws. This is the same process that we used to attach the original slats together. Our last step before getting it up into our room for assembly was to add that big two by six topper piece. So we ended up getting it on the top, measuring and to make sure that the overhang was even on either side. And we ended up centering it so the overlap was on both the front and the back. It was evenly distributed. Then Alex just took four inch construction screws and just went right through the top of that two by six. That way everything was set I wasn't too worried about the headboard because you're not going to be looking at it from the top angle anyway. We also did the same thing with the footboard so you can see the screws if you look close enough but because we used the impact driver to get them in they are recessed within the wood so I'm not as concerned. If you're worried about seeing those screw holes you can assemble this before you stain and seal and then use some wood filler but that wasn't a problem for me. I don't think it looks bad at all. Once we had our headboard and footboard fully assembled, we got it up the stairs in our house and into our bedroom. Then it was time to take the two by fours and really assemble this bed. So Alex marked where everything needed to go. It was seven inches up from the bottom of the footboard. He took a two by four that was cut to 83 and a half inches and used some more of those four inch construction screws to hook the two by four flush on the inside of the bed. While doing this, he added two pilot holes just to make sure that the screw went in correctly and that it didn't split the wood. So then once those two pieces were attached, then we leaned up the headboard and Alex used just some scrap two by four to hold everything up. He measured everything and then hooked it to the headboard as well so that everything would sit up. This piece is crucial that you use a level to make sure that the bed is going to be level. When you hook it to the back of your headboard, make sure that you leave just enough room so that you can hook another two by four behind to the four by four post, which you'll see in a minute. That ended up being just about two inches or so. And here is what that two by four looks like when it's hooked to the bed. Then the last step to create this outline of your bed is to take another two by four. This one is gonna be 77 inches approximately in width. This is one of those you're gonna to wanna to measure after you get your sides on. And Alex got it to fit in there snug. Then we just took some pocket hole screws and screwed it in to those posts so everything was nice and rigid. After that outside area was completed, we needed some additional supports in the center to hold up the bed. So Alex took four pieces of two by four that was cut to seven inches and used some more screws to hook it to longer two by fours. Those longer ones are the same length as the outside pieces, so 83 and a half. And once those were screwed in, those little legs that he's adding here, then it made it a lot easier for it to sit up and not have all the weight be on a suspended piece of wood. So those little seven inch pieces will take a little bit of the weight and help disperse it across the bed. Then he got everything aligned equidistant across the bed and then went in with some more of those four inch screws to hook it together. For the headboard, he went directly through the back of that two by four piece. And then for the front, he went directly through the footboard. Again, if you're worried about seeing the screws, you could definitely add an additional piece of trim on the bottom. It's so low, I really don't even see it and can't even tell. But again, it depends on how you want it finished. So here is what that will look like when it's finished. Then the last step is to take the additional eight two by fours that are cut to the 77 inches for width and get them aligned equidistant across your bed. 
This is going to create an area where your mattress and box spring can go. Then to attach them, we drilled pocket holes, two per piece per side. So here, Alex is doing two per piece of wood on his side, and then I did two per my side. And then it was really starting to look like a bed and the last step was to add the 1x12s to cover up all of those unfinished wood pieces. They fit in really snug. Then Alex took these metal brackets also from Menards, they're just little 1 inch ones, and added them with screws so that it was hooked to the 4x4 posts. Here is what the bed looks like when it's done. Obviously it looks not as great without a mattress, but here is what the innards look like to help hold everything up. And then once you add your mattress, it really ups the game. I added some pillows and this thing is awesome. I absolutely love it. It was exactly what I wanted for our room. And before we had such a basic bed, so here's what it looked like and here's what it looks like now. This wood tone is perfect in that room. I love that it matches our nightstands, which I also have a video on, and I am just so proud of this build that we were able to do together. Like I mentioned, all of the information for this, as well as all of the cuts and more in-depth instructions will be over on my blog, whiskeyandwit.com, which is linked down in the description. If you're interested in my other builds, I will link that playlist for you as well. And be sure to subscribe because tomorrow I will have my full master bedroom reveal for you guys. You can see how it all came together. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.